What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Kaiser Cutlery uh, Fire Ant, a Dirk Pinkerton design. This knife was provided for review by the Apex Pass Run Group, so by extension Kaiser themselves. As usual I will uh, try not to let that affect my review, but it should be pretty easy considering I don't get to keep this knife. If you guys are new to my channel uh, or you've been enjoying my channel for a long time, either way, uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon, I do have a link down in the description. Uh, you can click on that link, have a look around. There are, of course, some cool stickers that have, are available at some of the lower tiers. Uh, but even the $1 tier will grant you access to my once a week Patreon exclusive content. Um, and then all at the same time, you'll be helping me reach my new goal of 90 patrons. What happens at 90 patrons? I'll be doing a free to enter giveaway for a new awesome knife that's going to be revealed soon. This will be uh, available to everybody to enter. So if any of that sounds exciting to you, uh, please uh, take a look at my Patreon. The support would absolutely mean the world to me. Let me go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. I have found that when Dirk Pinkerton's name pops up on a knife, I always really like the aesthetic. <laughs> I guess I guess Dirk Pinkerton's eye, uh, his aesthetic eye is very similar to mine. Um, six and a half inches, just about. It's just shy of six and a half inches. From tip to scale, you're looking at definitely under three inches on the blade, so that's good, and probably about 2.6 inches of cutting edge. So this is not a big knife. Uh, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. By the way, guys, this is yet another video where I ha have uh, used the new lighting. I've dimmed the lighting down. Uh, anybody who's been watching for a while, let me know if this is this lighting a little bit better. Does it look a little bit better? Is it not so explosively bright? That's what I'm going for. Is not quite as bright as my old videos. Up against the Ontario Rat 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see they're definitely smaller than the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Gruptilian? Benchmade Gruptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, is coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Bug Out? Bug Out is coming in at 7.5 inches overall. Pretty good size comparison there. Last but not least, the smallest knife that I use for a size comparison, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 is coming in at 7.25. So, little guy, absolutely. Uh, let's have a look at the action on this guy. The action is nice and crisp and it, it feels very smooth. And I think what we're looking at here is, let me get my flashlight. Where's my other flashlight? Well, it's apparently gone. No, there it is. <laughs> let's have a look in here. It looks like we are running on phosphor bronze. Um, I believe that is the case. A lot of people ask me, why don't you look that kind of stuff up? I don't want to create bias. I've talked about this before. I like to just experience the knife and then talk about it on camera. Though I suppose I could look it up right before the video. In any case, it feels very smooth. It almost feels like it's on bearings, but it, it, it isn't. It's, it's running on phosphor bronze, um, and I like that. Um, I like that because if you were to use this knife in a, uh, you know, a setting where there's a lot of dirt and debris, it's not going to get caked up in there. It's not going to get trapped between, you know, any bearings and, and any surfaces. Um, it's it's going to be much harder for that to occur. So I really like that. The action is very smooth, very crisp. I can do the reverse flick. I can do the thumb flick. Thumb studs are in the right place despite it being a small knife. And it's just, it's nice. I, I honestly very much appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. So for materials, what we're looking at here is not super duper thick S35VN, and it's also a small blade, so there's not a lot of potential for weight, at least from the blade. 120,000 stock thick on the blade, and then the titanium on the inside has not been milled out, but it's not ultra thick, and there's not a lot of it. So weight coming in, an unsurprising 2.68 ounces, which is right about at that ounce and inch mark uh, that a lot of people like to go by. I like that. It's nice and light, but it still has a lot of features that make it more robust. Full titanium running on phosphor bronze. That's cool. So, uh, what are we looking at for the blade shape? Well, this is a very standard Warncliffe and a very, very handsome Warncliffe. We have Kaiser's, excuse me, I'm going to get my fingerprints off of it. It's got, uh, it's Kaiser's. Typical handsome stone wash, love Kaiser stone wash. 
does a nice job of, uh, of course, knocking down all these edges that would otherwise probably be sharp. Um, really, really looks nice. Very straightforward worn cliff. This is a great EDC blade shape, especially in a smaller blade. I have really come to enjoy the uh, Warncliffe blade. And, you know, those of you who've been around for a while, you know Jeff, he always talks about how much he loves the Warncliffe blade. I think more so for aesthetics, but in terms of a utility blade, I mean, there's a reason that an actual utility knife is shaped that way. It's just, I mean, for a package opener or a draw cut, it's really great. We're going to talk about that specifically on this knife a little bit more here in a sec. The edge is very well done, very uniform. It's perfect. For those of you who don't know, Kaiser knives are made in China. I will say, you can see that there's Dirk Pinkerton's um, insignia. Um, I do not mind the Kaiser logo right here. That looks just fine. S35VN is fine. I don't know why we need all of that. Uh, the KI253, that's kind of silly. And then the incredibly basic font that they use to write Fire Ant. I don't need to know the knife. I don't need it to be printed on the blade. I know what it is because I'm buying it. It can be printed on the website, right? But I mean like the steel type and the logo I think is fine. And then if there's a designer involved, I think that's also fine. But when the name is printed on the blade, it's kind of like, ugh. and then on top of that, they use such a boring font. That's, that's kind of stinks, but okay. Not, not a deal breaker. Functional jimping up top. Uh, very nice. It's extended out quite a way. So if you really need to bear down on this knife, You've got good traction up here. Like I said, I really like the thumb studs and I really like the position of the thumb studs. They're very easy to gain access to. Ever so slight uh, scallop right there to gain access to it. It's really, really nice. There is a little sharpening choil down here as well. Um, so if you know, need to resharpen it, you're gonna be just fine. Um, Worn cliffs, you know, down here at the tip, they tend to be, I mean, arguably just as weak at the tip as a drop point blade in the same thickness and length and mass, I guess. Um, so like most folding knives, like I usually say, don't stick the tip in places and pry with it and expect it to, to do what you're trying to do with it there because it's really just meant to cut. This is uh, S35VN. S35VN is, is fantastic. Um, I like the, uh, the ease of uh, sharpening. I like the uh, uh, the fact that it's got good air retention is, and that it's, uh, of course, um, uh, stainless and pretty tough. I, I think it is one of, if not the toughest stainless steel. I've said that before. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But it is definitely at least one of the tougher stainless steels out there. Um, taking a look at the titanium, it's very typical Kaiser. It's sort of a bead-blasted titanium it's just standard titanium, but it's just a bead blasted finish. Looks nice. I like that. A lot of people find it boring, but I like a uh, monochromatic look, so I'm a big fan of that. Um, nicely chamfered uh, all the way around, no sharp edges, anything like that. Let's go ahead and get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver, two very inexpensive and very, very helpful items um, that I use. Um, on my knives for maintenance and for disassembly. You can find both of them down in the description as well as a lot of the knives that I show on this channel every single day, whether they are high-end uh, US production knives or some more budget-friendly knives, or you're just looking for EDC items or tools or maintenance stuff, everything is nicely categorized down there so you can get what you want and scratch whatever itch needs to be scratched. Let's go ahead and pull, I'm gonna guess that this is, um, a T8, you'd think that I would have that down by now. The pivot anyway is gonna be a T8. Yep, pivot's a T8, and I'm gonna guess that the body screws are gonna be T6, because Kaiser does that. Uh, and a lot of companies do that, so you know I'm not really gonna fault them too hard on it. What is this? No, it's T6, okay. So body screws are T6, you guys know how I feel about that. I don't like that. I wish they were all T8. It's not gonna stop me from purchasing a knife. It's usually a combination of things. T6 body screws aren't gonna stop me. I don't like them because the heads strip out easy and the bits can strip out easy, but okay. Uh, we do have, we actually don't have a lanyard hole back here. That's fine, I don't care about lanyards. I don't feel like a lot of people, I feel like people are kind of grown away from that, you know? Um, two screws into two really nice looking standoffs. I really like the standoffs there, nice reflectivity. They look nice. You've got some, um, it's very, the jimping on this knife is very Rick Hinderer-y. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you guys know, but on a Hinderer XM18, you know, there's just jimping everywhere. <laughs> this knife has jimping down here, same with the 
Kaiser has got jimping on the back. You know, it's it reminds me of a Rick Hinderer knife, and I like that. I like being able to have a grip and in in, uh, in excess as long as it's not overboard to the point where it's hurting my fingers, and it doesn't in this case. It's just fine. Um, two screws on one side, two screws on the other with two standoffs. That's awesome, making um just minimal parts overall. So that's really nice. The pocket clip is interesting. Uh, titanium pocket clip, plenty of uh, retention, comes in and out of the pocket easily. And it goes along with the design of the knife. There's not a lot sticking out and it's got two screws holding it in. So it's not, there's not gonna be any play. Um, you do feel it a little bit when you're holding it. It's pretty, it's kind of a bulky clip in comparison with the rest of the knife, but that's fine. It's not a deal breaker. It uh, looks nicer than some of the stamped clips that I see uh, in knives of the, in this price range. So I, uh, I am appreciative of that. It does have a steel lock bar insert that's doubling as the over treble stop. So that's great. You can see their lock up fully engaging the lock bar insert at about 35% or so. And it is of course, perfectly centered. So that's fantastic. So, uh, here's my favorite thing about this knife. You know, like I said, really my only complaint is that, I mean, okay. The thumb stud is a little bit in the cutting path. If you're going to cut straight down with this guy, you're going to lose about an eighth of an inch of cutting path, you know, and this is possibly the type of blade you might do that with. Um, but that's not really that big of a deal. And I don't like the T6 screws. Okay. I can get my hand all the way around it. Surprisingly, I can get my hand all the way around this guy. Really feel locked in. Really like this. Here's my favorite position. Let me find something to actually cut on. Let me see if I can pull a box on camera yeah so excuse this uh right here so here's a piece of paper this is what i really love about this so i don't know if this was intentional but i've just found that my fingers fall so perfectly into place here you can see all my fingers wrapping around here on this side falling right into that groove my pinky is catching down here on the uh the uh jimping down at the bottom and then i'm sort of resting my thumb up against that thumb stud and i'm putting this finger up top on the top of the worn clip uh, or the nose of the Warren Cliff, I guess. And it's so easy, well, poor demonstration. It's so easy to make these types of um, precision draw cuts. And I like that. I actually do do that a lot. I mean, in my office, I do, I make cuts like that. And I really appreciate this style of knife uh, or this style of blade to make that easier. But specifically, this little tiny guy this little tiny fire ant that just fits so perfectly. I'll do that again for you here. It's almost like, I mean, I'm gonna assume that this was on purpose so that he could, you could hold it just like that. It's so comfortable, just such a natural organic feeling. And I like that a lot. I really, really do. And I think anybody looking for a small, full titanium Warncliffe that's made extremely well is really gonna enjoy this. Um, I, I it, it seems to be begging for a bigger brother. I would love to see an eight inch version of this. I just, because I know like how much people um, in today's knife world really like Warren Cliffs, especially sort of the straightforward sort of, it's like the tactical gentleman's knife. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I feel like this should have a bigger brother. That would be really awesome. But uh, this guy alone by itself is still a really great knife. And I'll tell you what I really like about it, the price. Um, it's on sale right now as of the time as of the time of this video So check the date if you're watching it two years in the future and you're like you said it was on sale We'll check the date um, But uh, as of right now, I'm seeing it on sale for like a hundred to hundred and five bucks I mean definitely yes, but even at, at its original price. I think it was like 120 to 130 Yeah, I can recommend this all day Kaiser has done a really good job about keeping their pricing in check and being very competitive Everything that I've handled from Kaiser for the most part has been very well made, uh, high quality materials, great fit and finish, and especially amazing prices. Um, I'm very, very happy with this. This is absolutely gonna be a recommended knife. Um, whether you're purchasing at the sale price right now or you find it somewhere else for roughly 125, absolutely yes. This is gonna go on my most recommended knives of all time playlist. So make sure and check out that playlist. Guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for my review on the Kaiser Fire Ant. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.